What's up? Ian from Powerhouse Miniatures. Welcome to the very first miniature bat rep that I'm doing. A mini mini bat rep. Um, I'm going to do some little like one on ones, little like cage fights. I'm thinking of toying with the idea of like 40 cage fights. You know what I mean? Like 40k fight. <laughs> something, something stupid like that. I don't know. Uh, maybe 30 cage fight. And then doing basically weight divisions based on like the points of the model. So Patriarch goes off and guess what? Death Watch Overkill is 115 points, which would be like atom weight. Cataphractic Terminator, depending on the upgrades, would be like 135 to 165, which would be like middleweight or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Doing it one on one, and often it's going to be a close combat affair. So um, I'm going to get a different. I'm going to put on a proper backdrop and everything, um, and use these like game tiles as like a little arena sort of thing. Um, but it's pretty good. If you don't know the rules for these, um, they're all the Death Watch ones are free online, and the Praetors. Um, well, we'll mention it as we go along. In this thing, I'm not going to pick. I'm not going to roll the telepathy powers for Patriot Gozar. I'm just going to pick the Primaris power, which is Psychic Shriek. Uh, and I'm just going to go for the one. And obviously he's got three warp charges, so it's like... Um, the Praetor can deny the witch, but only a little bit. So, black and red dice. Black dice is the um, Praetor. So, roll to go first. Roll again. So, Praetor moving first. So, I'm going to say they're 18 inches apart. So the Praetor moves up six, he's 12 inches away. Gonna fire, he's got a combi Volkite, and I've not seen the rules for that. So I'm gonna assume it's a Volkite charger. Misses. <laughs> uh, 12 inches away, gonna try a 12 inch charge. Fails. Right, so that's the end of his turn. Patriot goes R, move up six. Uh, gonna cast Psychic Shriek with three dice. And it goes off, and there's nothing the Praetor can do to deny the witch, because we've rolled it on, a th on three warp chargers. Um, so he's six inches away, so three d6, basically, any more than his leadership, and he has to take that many hits. He can take his invulnerable save, but no other saves allowed. So Praetor's uh, leadership 10. <laughs> so there you go. 14, so four invulnerable saves. Now the Praetor's only got three wounds and a four-up invulnerable save because of the uh, cataphractic Terminator armor that he's been given. But, so he's dead, there you go. So one nil to Patriarch Gozar. I'm going to put a little one so you can see at the bottom right. Um, next time again, I'm still just still just doing these. Like I keep saying, all these little models, if I don't do videos with them now, I'm never going to get a chance. So they go all over, so it's like, got to do it again. So this time, Praetor is going to go first. Uh, and again, just assume they're 18 inches apart. Like I said, eventually I'm going to build like a board for them, and I'll do it like that. I am, uh, I am well into the idea of doing this like cage fighting thing though. Um, 40 cage fighting or something like 40k I don't know we'll see so he moves up 6 inches he's 12 inches away fire the combi volkite which hits wounds and a 4 wounds uh, he's got a 4 up save which he fails now he goes down to 2 wounds but also with the defle defle great or defle great special rule any unsaved wounds cause an additional automatic hit so wounds again on a 4 wounds 4 plus save makes it on a 5 Right, so he's got a 12-inch charge and fails it. Now, goes our turn, moves up six inches away. He's going to try and cast Psychic Shriek on 3d6. And it goes off with one warp charge. Now, the Praetor can use his 1d6 as Deny the Witch, which he doesn't get. So he's now six inches away, so he's going to go roll um, for his charge, 2d6, and he can... Uh, he could have run up, he can still run, I think, after the psychic phase, but he's got six, and he can reroll one with fleet. Because it's slow and purposeful with the cataphractic terminator armor, the uh, Praetor can't overwatch. So he's in combat seven. Now, the dude's initiative seven or something stupid, so he's definitely going first, but also the Praetor has got a thunder hammer, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, five attacks, hitting on threes. So this one was off, so he got three hits. Now, wounded on threes, rerolling, sixes are rending. So. One wound, re-rolling. Three wounds. The guy's got a two-up save. Keep <laughs> and he's absolutely fine. Praetor got four attacks, hitting on fours. One hit. That's shite. Wounded on two. No armor saves. So it takes one. Now I believe they're both fearless and we're not gonna not gonna run anyway. In some of these bat rep things I might do it so that it's like they never run away or something. So Gozar goes first again. One hit again piece of shit. Rolling a three, so one wound, two plus armor save. Fails it. Two left for the Praetor. Praetor's four attacks. 
uh, hitting on fours, two hits now, two two pluses, anything but snake eyes. There you go, one death goes our down. So that so far is a draw. So this is the decider. Move them back, and again, just assume that they're 18 inches apart. And again, this is going to be a lot to do with um, close combat. I need to find the rules for that combi Volkite as well. I'm just using it as a Volkite charger at this point. At least it's 165 points with a combi weapon, which is what I paid for the upgrade. I believe a Volkite charger is 7, so 162 or something like that. So yeah, roll for first. The black one is a Praetor. So roll again. Black one's a Praetor. Okay, so Praetor goes first. He's probably best off just standing still, to be honest, but... Uh, yeah, what's he going to do? Not going to move. So, Bolter hitting on two, wounding on a four, nothing. And he's going to stay still. So, Gozar's turn, moves up six, 12 inches away. Uh, he's going to cast Psychic Shriek, 3d6. Right, goes off with two warp chargers. The Praetor can't stop it because he's only got one. Deny the Witch, so three. So, that's 12, which means he gets two armor saves against the Praetor. No armor saves allowed, but he's got a four up in vulnerable. Saves one, so he lost a wound, two wounds left. Now we're 12 inches away. Um, and in fact, the Gozar's going to run four inches. So now he's eight inches away. So he's got an eight inch charge on 2d6, and he can reroll one of them. Seven, so I'm going to reroll the one with Fleet. There you go, 11, so he's in. Now, five attacks on a charge, hitting on three, because he's weapon skill seven, which is mental. Uh, wounding on threes, re-rolling, the sixes are end. So one wound so far, re-rolling, nothing, just one, so a two up save. Makes it. Praetor got four attacks back, hitting on fours. Yeah, three hits, wounding on two. Now he's only got three wounds and no armor saves against this, so anything but ones and the Gozar's dead. Oh, there he is, Gozar dead. So, Praetor is about 40 more points. Which is a thing, but in this little bat rep, miniature bat rep, gonna keep doing these. Uh, which again, we're just whatever models I've got on hand at the time. Gozar, 2 1. No, the Praetor 1, 2 1. Um, I would have thought he'd done better in combat, and then Psychic Shriek as well. That's just an awesome <laughs> in these little 1 on 1 things. Then yeah, it's a Primaris, so I'd obviously you'd pick that. Um, you might end up getting invisibility or something if you rolled on it, something crazy, but there it is. So next, I've got a, I've got a load of stuff a load of things that I've got on my eBay page and I'll do a few more of these little bat reps. So that's it. Check back soon. Cheers for watching.